This is Plus TV Africa, where big stories live. Welcome to Tea Time, where we bring you the biggest stories and interesting personalities to have conversations around things that affect you and I. My name is Elsie Godwin, and I'm here with Ewa Ritu and Ife Oluwa Oshokaye. What's up, How you people? doing? How you Don't doing? mind my Ray J look this morning. There's a reason for that. What's the reason? Just tell us the reason. Yes, because mm -hmm. you can't just be doing anyhow. You guys don't want to see me looking the way I'm looking, so just... See how it feels. He's switching into his baby boy mode. I don't understand. Accommodate me like this, please. Just, mm. just for today. Mm. From Monday, you start seeing my beautiful face again. Oh. Mm. Not answer me. Beautiful okay. face. Anyway, let's start quickly with um, Tiwa Savage, who reacts to OAP's caught on camera gossiping. That's what I like to call it. I don't know about mocking female artists, but mm. gossiping, right? Um, I saw the video this morning, and I saw Tiwa's comment. And from what I gathered, I don't know, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think she was the one who posted the mm. video. It's not like she got it from somewhere. I don't know. So I'm not sure of the source of that video, but... I think you guys should go ahead. Yeah, I believe it's from somebody in their yeah, camp mm -hmm. that is trying to find favor with Siwa. Mm. That now snitched on our colleagues mm. or his colleagues and then sent the video to Siwa. Because apparently she... I don't know if they just had an interview with her. Because they said she just finished an interview. That, as in, there are different stories mm. on, on online, right? Mm. Some are saying that um, she just finished an interview, then she left, and mm. then they started talking after she left. But some are saying that some OAPs didn't know that they were still recording, mm -hmm. and they were gossiping about... Um, I think the so, one I saw was that one that she just finished an interview, interview with, with them, right? With them, yeah. yeah. So the camera is from her team. No, no. It's I still think, an in-house thing. You know, so, I think they're supposed to. So send definitely, someone you from in-house in sends this video to you. Know, That's like, so wrong. Somebody comes. Levels. No, you know, like somebody comes to the show and you're like, okay, you were making a live video mm -hmm. and it's something you can save. And, mm -hmm. the person, and then you tell the person kindly send to me. So maybe that one too did not even check. As in, I'm, you know, now I'm trying to look mm -hmm. at it from both sides. That one too didn't check. That one just took the recording, just forwarded mm -hmm. it to T.Y. immediately. And T.Y. was watching an interview and probably just saw the end. Credits. What do you think about her reaction, though? Well, I think it was amazing. And um, why I think it was amazing, because um, those ladies, first of all, that's a woman. I know women gossip. Even Everybody men gossips. gossip. Mm. Yeah, that's why I said even men gossip. Mm. But if really she just finished the show with you, right? I know we've also had guests on the show that <laughs> <laughs> after they go, okay. <laughs> we say certain things, right? Mm -hmm. But I don't think it would be up to that extent of saying, ah, she's a fool. She's... And please, oh, I need to... I, I didn't hear clearly, uh -huh. though. Yeah, yeah, I didn't hear clearly. Did you hear she's a fool? Yes, Did but you, you say, ah, serious? that's what Savage is a fool. The only thing I... She's a blue, and she's, she's, she's I, blowing I, I, by I, she singing other people. Yeah, she, she, she can't write her song. She can't write her song. She's blowing by... Yes, she said she oh, can't wow. write her song. She's blowing by singing other people's song. That one is a fool. Ah. Do you know that kind of thing? Like, why are you saying that about somebody? If they just... said that, that means they're probably not even aware that it, 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 almost all the artists in the world well, if don't this... write their songs. Well, well, you can't even tell. Look, look, there's a way you gossip about people and then you have facts. But in this case, everything you were gossiping about was wrong. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? Because... Tiwa Savage is an internationally renowned songwriter. We're not just talking about the local level. She writes for people like Mary J. Blige. She has written for people like um, Kelly Rowland. Do you understand? So how can you be saying things that are not true? Do you understand? So, um, and I like the fact when she said, and for these three girls in this video, I hope you keep the same energy when you see me face to face. Do you know she, she be seen? Hmm? Bless you now. I, that's why we're watching this piece. <laughs> yeah, she can't do anything, even if she sees them anyway. I mean, I'm sure but, now but, that But do you know if out. this was in the um, Western world, these ladies would probably lose their jobs. They'll probably no, no, lose they, their jobs. I remember even, one yeah, of their yeah. guys. This um, is Nigeria. The same station that sacked them. Was it not Benny Ark? Mm -hmm. For, mm -hmm. okay, they refused to link it directly to the... She did my case, but then after that period, he was sacked, and they just refused. I mean, this is not so even about possible. the Western world. It's just I feel like it's just at this point, it's just what is right for the um, mm. company. Yeah, to for do. the company. Mm. Okay. But let's see how this plays out. For me, what Nigeria. I would say is, um, was how did they say that thing in the Bible? 
if you have not sinned, you can chew the it fish was, stone. Yeah. That and is all I'm my, going my to My own say problem is that... The ladies are being bashed left, right, centre. I woke up this morning, saw them trending on number eight. That was when I realised, okay, what was going on? And I checked, you know. At the end of the day, all of us gossip. The people that are typing all these things, they have said worse things about you are behind. They probably mm. have not come out to say it in front. So if you think you are the holier than mm. thou person, mm -hmm. continue typing. That's my, what I my, have to my, say. Own, my own um, problem about this is people linking it with women bringing women mm. down. Women. I'm it's like, not it, women bringing women down. Please, I don't know. It's, it's not even in contest this time around. So, There's nothing like women bringing. It's not like they are publicly putting it out there that, or oh, it's just gossiping. Anyway. It just leaks. Okay, out. so there's another um, one that just came up on screen that said that video is from last year. Oh, yeah. Oh, so the office okay. has cameras rolling 24 7. That video is from last year. Someone from their office took it and gave it to Tiwa. Why? Is I, the think, question. I think they should find Why? the person that gave Tiwa. And that that's video. the person that, that should person, be sacked. Yeah, that person needs Actually. to be sacked too. Because you don't do that to you don't take your colleague. I mean, to even start with. Do you yeah, get that's, that's office content. Mm. So giving that to somebody that is not part of your team mm. or that is not part of your company is um, violating the mm. um, labor code. Right. So first of all, that person should be sacked and uh, yeah we all gossip but yeah I think well I get where you're coming from though because she we say um now the person we then catch the yeah. uh, <laughs> so, yeah so that's all um, I have to say all right sign for a <laughs> oh, Oh, shit. It's time for a quick break, <laughs> but um, today is International Day for the Girl Child, and we have a guest um, to discuss this. When we come back, we'll introduce this guest. Welcome to Tea Time on Plus TV Africa, where we bring you the biggest entertainment stories and, of course, analyze them for you. You can have both parents and still end up as a useless child at the scene every day. <laughs> <laughs> Most times, I worry more about where I'm coming from mm. and where I am now, wow. and that determines my next step. Why are you sounding like an Alibaba? Alibaba. Oh, <laughs> Plus TV Africa, we're feeling good. No time to die, everybody feeling all right. Still buy. Sometimes I look myself minimal are you. Mm. Akpala music is for mature minded people. I got DM sometimes from Malawi like woo. <laughs> <laughs> Sleeping early. Sleeping early. <laughs> Welcome back. This is Tea Time on Plus TV Africa. Since 2012, the United Nations set aside 11th October of every year to celebrate the girl child, using the day to promote girls' empowerment, fight for the rights of the girl child, and to tackle issues relating to child marriage, education inequality, and gender-based violence, among others, as they affect the girl child. Our guest on this episode, as we mark the International Day of the Girl Child, currently works for John's Johns Hopkins Center for Communication Programs and a youth program officer on the Nigerian Urban Reproductive Health Initiative Project, where she leads the implementation of the life planning for adolescents and youth um, projects in Lagos State. The project is targeted to reach people aged 15 to 24 years with family planning information and services. She's also the FA um, Family Planning 2020 Youth Focal Person for Nigeria. Let's welcome Bless Me Ajani. Is that all you? Thank you. <laughs> just you. Thank you for having me. Oh, you are like three other people. <laughs> oh, it's just me. Like oh, wow. Right. That's amazing. <laughs> Thank you. Well done. Well done. So what do you feel about October 11th? Yeah, so um, I think it's um, it's a very good thing that we have a day set aside to celebrate the progress of the girl child, whether to discuss the empowerment and the issues around the girl child in itself. So I think it's a good thing that there is a day to discuss these issues all right, I like the fact that you brought up um, issues. So, um, what do you think are some of the basic challenges being faced by a girl, by the girl child? In well, um, in our context, being a girl already puts you at a disadvantage. Mm -hmm. Now, being a younger so can girl, can you uh, um, explain that? So, um, it's just like um, risk factors. The fact that you're a girl, you have challenges based on the um, the patriarchy um, of our society. Okay. So um, there are a lot of issues, you know, this is a society, especially in Nigeria, our, contra, our cultural context put the girl child um, way mm. below the boy child. And in terms of mm. education, you know, mm. a boy child is seen as, oh, 
in terms of um, education, a boy child is seen, he's to expected school, to go yeah. to school because he's expected to have the financial mm -hmm. capability to take care of his home. And then, of course, whatever the girl child becomes, even this generation where we're talking about girls going to school, you still have, you know, the mentality is still there that whatever it is you become, you still mm -hmm. have to be very, very submissive or be on that guy, whether, <laughs> whether you like it or <laughs> not. And then the a lot of are, consent right? issue is also another thing we that is facing the girl child, you know, you can't access some of the services mm. and then somebody wants to ask you, are you married? In fact, renting a house in Lagos sometimes, mm. the first question they ask you as a girl, are, are you, you married? married? I see if I cannot make my money and rent my house. <laughs> oh, in female, in male dominated um, sector for, cri for, um, for right now, I was talking with a female pilot that I met recently. And then we we're just discussing that challenge. She was like, the truth is some guys in the sector still make her feel like, excuse me, why would we be earning the same salary? Mm. Excuse me, she's a female pilot. She deserves to earn for what she has worked for. But you know, that's, um, that disparity is still there in terms of gender. And also, in fact, down to health services, in terms of accessing health services, they just believe that you cannot access these services. Or like a guy, it's easier for a guy to walk into a store and buy condom, you know, mm. they praise him, oh, you're doing great. Mm. But if a girl walks into a pharmacy shop and buy condoms, it'll be like, you mm. know, there's this promiscuous way of mm. looking at the girl. But excuse me, the same guy also came in to access condoms. And he's not going to have it with himself. And right. of course, even <laughs> access, <laughs> exactly, even accessing family so planning cool. services, they want you to get consent from your male partner mm. before you get it. And that's why we, we are doing this project, Life Plan, where we are empowering girls to say, hey, mm. excuse me, you have the server steam, you know, you have the self -effect case to access any service you want to access irrespective of the hotel. So how long do you think it would take for all of this to change and do you think it would ever change because I think this is just a society we live in no matter how much we try to educate people empower people I think there's just something about being a woman that would remain permanent so how long do you, do you think this will ever change? Well, we have not gotten to where we want to get to, but we are not where we used to be about 25 years ago yeah. when the first International Day of the Girl Child was commemorated all over the world. You know, a lot of progress have happened. We could see that female genital mutilation is decreasing with mm -hmm. the Nigeria still, mm -hmm. <laughs> still has the highest prevalence of 47% uh, worldwide. Wow. Worldwide, yeah, Nigeria has the highest prevalence of female genital mutilation. Teenage deaths due to... Um, Pregnancy-related issues is still one of the highest in Nigeria. But yeah, compared to where we are coming from 25 years ago, it's a whole lot of progress now, taking a step back. And of course, with more interventions, awareness around this thing, I know that we are going to move there. At least we can see females in a whole lot of sectors these days. We can see females as ministers mm -hmm. compared to 25 years ago when yeah, we have, you know, we can see, no you know, I was on the radio this morning when I was coming. I was listening to the radio, and then they were talking about the legacy of Dora Quilly, what she did as a female, and what, it, what is it now? So it's a whole lot of progress, but hopefully I know that with more awareness, with more interventions, you know, by every stakeholders we are going to get there, maybe maybe someday. Mm -hmm. All right, it depends so on our question. Question. You know, I know she has a question, <laughs> but I saw something on her status yesterday where she said um, she thinks abortion should be legalized in Nigeria. Do you think that's true, that because a lot of women have been broken because um, of unwanted pregnancy? So do you think um, abortion should be legalized? Okay, so um, personally, I'm more of a preventive person. I would say, okay, instead of because of all the dangers and risks around ab abortion, um, I'm more of a preventive person, and that's why I would say, that's why I would always say, you know, it's better you go for contraceptive instead of doing the deed and then now looking for a solution and all of that. But yeah, abortion is not totally legal in Nigeria as it were, anyways, because if um, the life of the mother is at stake, the law permits that the mother. That they, um, that they save the life of the mother instead of the baby, you know. It's important that the mother is alive to take care of the baby. But of course, um, personally, I would think we should do more with preventive mechanisms than um, looking at um, all the laws around abortion right. because of the health and medical now. risks involved. Okay, um, you were talking about improvements the other time, so I wanted to ask, what do you think, um, what's your take on girl-child labor like 10 years ago and how it is now, do you think it has reduced or is still there? Because I feel like nothing is changing. We still have girl child labor every day. Yeah, unfortunately, <laughs> I have neighbors where I live currently that, that their house help is a victim of all of this. And you know, I find it very, very, very saddening and all of that. But you know, compared to 
<laughs> when I was growing up and now, there are a lot of improvement, but I think we still need to put a lot of strict laws in terms of child labor, even both boys and girls in this case. Mm. Sorry, it's International Day of the Girl Child, but let's not forget that at the end of the day, it makes two people to procreate and all of that. Mm. We need to also ensure that our boys know how to handle our girls. So it's unfortunate that um, <laughs> we have not really gotten there. There haven't been so much improvement, but I think we need to do more with our laws, maybe implementation of those laws and policies about um, child labor in Nigeria, you know. Uh, my neighbor has a 10-year-old boy who they maltreat every time, and a lot of times I've confronted them. But of course, there's little I can do. And then the, the woman was even telling him, that, excuse me, I'm paying for him, so why should he even go to wow. school? And she's a teacher. Mm. Can, you, can wow. you even imagine? Wow. And then she was even telling me that um, the elder sister of the boy, who is like 12 years old, just got pregnant in Lagos Island and all of that, that she was even surprised to see her. And you know, these are Nigerians, children and all of that. Do you think our problem is more of our mindset than the laws we have? Mm. Yeah, of course, the mindset is there. And I think another thing that is also encouraging child labor recently is this Etsman displacing people in the north. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a whole lot of putting a lot of these their children, like the um, Benue State now, most mm -hmm. of their farmlands have been taken <laughs> over by Etsman, yeah. you know, they have been displaced and all of that. So a lot of them are even eager to give their children out. Mm -hmm. It's unfortunate, you know, to give their children out. I think when we put all of those other good things in place, we will have a reduction at the level of child labor. But yeah, we still need to do more. And then our mindset, we just need to, of course, the child can stay with you and you can still do good. Of course, I can remember as, as, um, as a person, while I was growing up, my father being a pastor, we always have people's children in our house. But you know, that's why the fact that they are not my <laughs> biological siblings, they still go to the schools that we go to. Mm. Mm. All right, it's time for a very quick break. But when we come back, we'll definitely carry on this conversation. We'll be right back. Welcome to Tea Time on Plus TV Africa, where we bring you the biggest entertainment stories and, of course, analyze them for you. You can have both parents and still end up as a useless child at the scene every day. <laughs> <laughs> Most times, I worry more about where I'm coming from mm -hmm. and where I am now, wow. and that determines my next step. Why are you sounding like Ali Alibaba? Alibaba. Oh, <laughs> Plus TV Africa, we're feeling good. No time to die, everybody feeling all right. Still buy. Sometimes I look myself minimal are you? Mm. Apala music is for mature-minded people. That got DM sometimes from <laughs> Malawi, like what? <"Whoa." laughs> <laughs> Sleeping early. Sleeping early. <laughs> Welcome back. This is Tea Time on Plus TV Africa, and we're definitely celebrating International Day of the Girl Child. We've got Ajani Bless Me here with us, and um, before you had a follow-up question. All right, yeah, so I, you mentioned the Fulani Edsmen and displacements of a lot of kids out there, which is making it difficult. And um, it just crossed, it struck me that Saturday marked 2,000 days that the Chibok girls have been abducted, and about over 100 of them are still in captivity. So I would just like you to advocate to the government and just, please just say something about this girls. Well, um, it's, <laughs> it's very, very sad need to still know that those children are still in the custody of the Edmen. And of course, to our dear government, you know, that might just be the future no, president. Edmen, sorry, Bokwara. Bokwara. Oh yeah, yeah, to our dear government. And um, I left stakeholders in position to bring these girls back to their parents. It's important that we know that this might be the next president. There might be the next president, the first female president mm. of Nigeria among these girls. Maybe the girl that is going to win the next Nobel Peace Prize, mm. or the girl that is going to win the next Nobel Prize, or the greatest invention of our time, the girl might still be in the captive of the Boko Haram. Mm. So really, there's no time than now to act and or make just sure the that these of girls the are, president. you know, mm. <laughs> <laughs> there's no better time than now to act and ensure that these girls are brought back to school and get the life they deserve to achieve mm. their dreams and aspirations. Okay, I know you are an advocate for um, family planning and to make it better for the younger ones or sound better, we've called it life planning. So how would you say um, the younger ones are accepting the idea of family planning or even calling it life planning? Because even adults are, are finding it very difficult to say you're going to control the way they have their children. So um, the interesting thing is it's not necessarily about whether they use 
contraceptive family planning or not. It's about them realizing that, oh, there can't be proper planning for my life. Mm -hmm. You know, I want to go to school. What are the things that I need to put in place to ensure that I finish school when I'm supposed to finish school? Because really, um, if a girl gets pregnant along the way, she might eventually finish school, but you know, there has been a stopgap. At least you will be at home for two years mm. to take care of the child. The first nine months of pregnancy, you know, the first six months of breastfeeding, exclusive breastfeeding, and then the other six months for the child to at least be able to maybe stay with siblings, parents, or all the same. So whether you like it or not is a, is a, is a gap in your life mm. that you never, you are not, you have not bargained for. So the most important thing is a girl to be able to see that, yes, I can plan my life whether I'm sexually active or not sexually active. And that's why life skills is one of the components that we are giving to young persons about it. Oh, I should be able to decide that if I want to have sex now, I should be able to negotiate contraceptive use, condom use. You know, I should be able to know that um, my self-esteem should be on point. If you're not ready to have protected sex, please get lost. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. please get lost. It's, it's my body first and all of that. And I think this is the time that females really need to be very selfish with their body. As a girl, you need to be very, very selfish. Sorry to the guy. No, okay, so I want, bring, I want to bring this really up be now. Selfish Since you brought so. that up, um, there are also <laughs> female condoms, right? Exactly. But how many girls do you see carry this around? So that's exactly why we bite? need to, that's exactly why we are doing this awareness so that even as girls, you should know your options. Whether female condom, male condom, you know, other contraceptive methods like the PUs, the implant and the IUD, depending on the plans you have for your life, whether you've gotten pregnant now, you know, we have a lot of teenage teenagers that are pregnant that have children okay do you want to get pregnant in the next few years mm -hmm. or you want to take care of this baby and get back to learning the trade or something you know at least at the end of the day you have some financial empowerment and then it helps you to achieve your dreams and that's why we are doing this awareness so that even young person because one of the things we've noticed is that ignorance is a major thing mm -hmm. in our society ignorance you know but as a young person we know that hey I have options I can decide and then it's one thing for you to now know and that thing for you to make use of that option. And that's where life skills comes in because it's life skills that helps you to now make that decision. So, you know, it's important that they know their options and then, oh, I have these options. If they don't know the options, they cannot use anyway. So that's why we are doing all of this awareness so that they can know. I have options, so I can choose to take any of the options. Even if the guy decides not to use condoms, mm -hmm. the one that knows what is. I know that that's I right. have. Protected. <laughs> I'm protected and I can achieve <laughs> <laughs> my okay. life. As a girl child activist, what are the challenges you're facing in Nigeria? Uh, okay. Okay, um, challenges as a girl child activist. Well, maybe because of my background, I have always had it not necessarily easy, but it has always been, I've, I've always learned to talk to the crowd. If you like, tell me what I'm saying is wrong. But I've seen adults ask me questions like, what do you mean with these girls? Especially when it now comes to talking about contraception. Are, are you trying to tell us that? Um, our children should be promiscuous. So yesterday, somebody, a medical doctor asked me, I was in the university yesterday, and they asked me, say, you, can you tell your 16-year-old child to take contraception despite the fact that you know that she's pregnant? And I said, number one, a 16-year-old, she's already sexually active. Is it not better for me to tell her to take right. contraceptives <laughs> than for me to mm. deal with the fact that she's pregnant? Mm. And That's don't forget that it's a high risk about. pregnancy for a teenager to be pregnant. You know, mm -hmm. mm. it is very high risk. She might not survive it. Her pelvic are not <laughs> good enough That's to true. hold a nine month pregnancy and all of that. So um, people just feel that it's still this our personal bias, you know, to wrap our heads around it. But it's just us being hypocritical anyway. We know that these children are sexually active and. Whether they like, whether you, they don't take permission from you to have sex anyway, so, <laughs> and all of that. But of course, there are a lot of other challenges. Like people say, you know, it's not possible. You need to talk to this person, and all of that. But a lot of people have attacked me. Somebody have said, you, the way you are going like this, you might never get married. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so, so what are your what are your plans now for the girl child? Like future plans that youths can get involved. If anybody is interested in getting involved, how do they? Go okay. About so it? as an organization, um, like uh, as me working for an organization, just our life planning our program, and then we are supporting Lagos State to do a lot of awareness. So if you need information, you can walk in into any primary health care center in Lagos. They'll give you information. You can walk into any of the six youth-friendly centers in Lagos where you can get information and get involved through those channels in um, in hearing information mm -hmm. or organizing programs. As well. And of course, you can link, link us up on our social media handle at Get Together. 
dot ng mm -hmm. get it together ng on twitter instagram and facebook mm -hmm. so yeah we can always respond to you in any way you want to partner with us or you want to work with us or you want to get involved if it's access you need you can get access in any of the programs okay, what, what message do you have for the girl child today what special message would you say is coming from your heart yeah so um as a girl child first thing i want you to know is that um whatever it is you want to be in your life is your decision and no matter what, you are just unstoppable, just as the team is. Just know that nobody's scripting you, so there's no end to the movie. Mm -hmm. So just know that you're unstoppable. Go for whatever it is you want to go and achieve your dreams, despite all of the odds the society might have all right, so against you. Our time um, is up. Well, all right, but finally, <laughs> but because another we thing actually that... Is grief. <laughs> another thing that we're being faced with is sex education. I don't think par parents shy away from telling their children about sex. Because you spoke about the 16 year old girl. So just speak to the parents as well before we go. So, yeah, the truth is um, for the parent, the first point of contact where a child needs information is from you. And of course, a lot of things, you know, comprehensive sexuality education is important. Why it helps you to get closer to your children and it helps you to help them when they really need help instead of asking someone that might be of danger to them. So please, as parents, it's important that you strengthen the communication between yourself and your girl child so that you can enjoy the labor of your hard work. Thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that's how I wrap up this episode of Tea Time. Thank you so much for watching. And um, like she has said, remember to take care of your girl child and also the boy child. You can join the conversation by using the hashtag Tea Time on social media or Twitter to us at Plus TV Africa. My thank you as always go to my co-anchors, if you're Luo Shukaye and Ewa Ritu, and the entire production team. And of course, our guest, um, Bless Me, Ajani. Thank, thank you for you. being here. Also, you can watch Tea Time in London on Ben Television. My name is Elsie Godwin saying thank you for watching and see you later. Thank you.